Thank you, Felicia. Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon Kendall from American Crafts and We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm here to show you our newest We Are Memory Keepers tool, the Easy Tuft. So if you've ever wanted to make a rug, but you've been intimidated in the past about, you know, getting in, into this new craft that's super trendy right now, I'm going to show you today that it's so easy to do and so fun with the Easy Tough program. So we're going to jump right in because to make a rug from start to finish in an hour, we're going to need to like jump right in. So I'm going to just start by showing you kind of an example of what you can make with the Easy Tuft. So this is a rainbow rug that I've made. This is a cut pile rug. So it's got this really plush cut, like traditional carpet feel to it. It's completely backed and you can do all of this with the Easy Tuft program that you can find at Michael's. So we are going to do some variations on this rug. Now, the first thing you need to decide when you're doing Easy Tuft is what pattern do you want to do? What kind of rug do you want to make? The, really, there are so many options. You can do shapes, you can do large rugs, you can do small rugs, you can do coaster size things. Really, I, there are so many options. So to make it a little easier, We Are Memory Keepers has added some free templates and Felicia has the website address, but it's We, we Are Memory Keepers and that's the W-E-R, just the R, memorykeepers.com backslash easy hyphen tuft. And if you go to that, you're going to find there a ton of support for you with your easy tuft. So we've got instructional videos, the instruction booklet that comes with the easy tuft is also online there. And then all the way on the bottom, you'll see all these, this little row of icons. There's one that says templates. So the templates option gives you some of the rug designs that we have made here at We Are Memory Keepers. So this rainbow rug is included in there. And they're really cool because they've been scaled by our designers so that when you print them out on your eight and a half by 11 paper in a normal printer, they're scaled so that they can connect to each other really easily. So let me show you this, maybe with the overhead. Yep, there we go. So see this rainbow rug has printed out on six pieces of paper, keeping in mind the gap that you need right there where they join. Okay, so to put this together, I would just print it out and they're scaled to fit inside our easy tuft frame, which is a 20 by 30 tufting frame. So you can see there is our rainbow. So I would just take scotch tape and tape that all together. Then for speed, I have movie magic. So this is one that I have already taped together and used multiple times. Okay, so now we've got our full sheet rainbow and these little gaps right here, you don't need those. It's just to help you guide your line as you're tracing. Okay, easy enough, right? So there's multiple patterns that are already scaled like this in that We Are Memory Keepers tab of templates, but there's also a plan in the future to be adding more designs <clears throat> in the future as we keep going with tufting. So check back frequently because there might be a new design that you want. If you don't want to make a rainbow rug, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you didn't want to, <laughs> and you had something very specific in mind, of course, you can print your own pattern. You can use a little mini projector and project it directly onto your cloth and trace it that way. You can freehand it. I mean, if you're an artist and you just wanna freehand your rug, just draw it right on the cloth. We're going to trace this pattern onto our tufting cloth and use it to um, outline our pattern and to work within it. So really there's all different ways that you can do it. Also, if you want, to scale it up or scale it down, you can do that as well. So like, here's the same rainbow rug, but I did it smaller. So if you wanted to make like, I started making a little handbag, but I don't have a handle on it yet. Okay, so this is my little, my little rug that I'm gonna do some closures and a handle on, but it's like my rainbow, it's the same rainbow pattern, shrunk down smaller and turned into a little tote. So that's how you can get different sizes. I mean, you can just really print it any size you want. These are just a few examples um, of how you can reduce and increase the size. The one we're working with today is going to be this big one, though. I did it as big as I could print it because I wanted a big rug. Okay, the next thing we need, let me move this down for a moment, <clears throat> is our easy tuft frame. So this frame comes in a box like this. So it totally breaks down for easy storage. I'll show you a little bit of what comes in it. So you've got your clamps that you're going to clamp to your table. 
Okay. You've got the PVC type pipes. Okay. And then you have these little hinge pieces. Okay. And the pipe and the hinge piece, let me see if, I, if you can see that. Let me see. What's the best way to show you? Maybe on that camera. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this has a little embossed alphabet. Okay. So there's like an E. I don't know if you can see them. D, B. And all you do is you find the coordinating pole that also has the alphabet on it. Okay. So this one's an E. So I'd put it in the E. Okay. So now I've got it matching E to E. Okay. And it's really, really straightforward. Once you start working on it, you'll see how easy it is. Let me show you what it looks like when it's finished. Assembly. <clears throat> okay. So here we have it. So all I've done is find the, it's super easy, you guys. So it's just like C, 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 right? Okay. So that pole went between the two C's. And once you have it all together, you have this nice, like kind of angled frame. And then you also have these little pieces that are going to help us hold, clamp our tufting cloth onto our frame. So there's two long ones for the top and the bottom and two short ones for the sides. And then this extra pole right down here is how we're going to clamp it to our table. So we're going to clamp that second bottom front pole. Okay, so that's the front. Let's put our tufting cloth on. So tufting cloth looks like this. This is a monk's cloth and it's a really open weave, basically embroidery cloth. So if you've ever done punch needle or anything like that, this is that same monk's cloth and it's got these vertical lines running through. The We Are Memory Keepers Easy Tuft cloth is already cut to the perfect size to fit on our frame. So it's the 20 by 30 opening. All right, and then your frame also comes with, I forgot because I keep them in my pocket, <clears throat> comes with these little tiny blue pegs. So you'll wanna try to keep track of these. That's why whenever I, I am working with my tufting frame, when I first open the pot, put it in your pocket. Otherwise I just store them right inside my frame, but those are going to help hold our corners on. Okay, I'm gonna set mine down, try to keep track of them. And we're going to start by attaching this right to our frame. I'm hoping these camera angles are working. This has been tricky for us to figure out how to show you this large scale project. Okay, so you can either hold this here with your hand, kind of get it centered, or you could put one of those poles on the top, which is what I kind of like to do. And we'll tighten it later, but it just kind of holds it in place for me to place my end pegs. Okay, so see how I just squeeze that down on to the pole. These end pegs go in these coordinating holes on each of the four corners. So you'll see one there and you'll see one there and there's two on the other side. Okay, so that just helps hold our fabric tight. So it is a little tricky, but I try to find the hole with my thumb and then push this in. Now it is tight. So if you need to get a little tiny hammer or something to tap it in there, feel free to do that. It won't hurt it. Okay, see how that top pole kind of helps me hold this in place so I can find, get it in. Okay, Oop. you have to be kind of nimble fingered with these. Ooh, it is a tight squeeze. Let me get my little hammer and I'll show you how that works. I just have this tiny little eyelet setting hammer. I just tap it in, I find it a little bit easier. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the same exact thing on this other side that you can't really see. All right, I'll do the top first. Get it started and then tap it in. It's tight because you're pushing, the peg itself is already kind of tight in the hole and then you're pushing it around that fabric. So it just takes a little firm push. Works your muscles a little, your finger muscles. It's like you have to hold on to it, but it, it works once it's in there and you only have to do this at the beginning of each tuft. Right, okay, there we go. All right, now, <clears throat> the trick to this too is that we want this cloth as absolutely tight as we can get it because it will just make it easier when once we press the gun into the cloth. So I'm going to start my pole wrap here, this piece, as low as I can and then twist it up, okay? And then I'm gonna do the opposite here. I started as high up as I can and twist it down. 
Okay, we're kind of pulling on the fabric. All right, and we can tighten it as we go, as we need to while we're working. And you'll see me do that as we're working on the tufting. Okay. So you can see I'm getting some more stretch. And you absolutely want this as tight as you can get it. Okay. All right, pretty tight. See, I got a good bounce on there. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's kind of thumping when I tap on it. Okay, now we need to get our pattern onto here. So if I was projecting a pattern, I would just aim my projector right here at this and trace it with a Sharpie. Keep in mind also, I forgot to mention this before, you are working from the back of the project. So this is the front of your rug. So if you're doing words or anything, you do need to mirror them. The patterns in the We Are Memory Keeper templates are already mirrored for you. So when they, you don't have to do anything, just print them. But if you're doing your own pattern or you're freehanding, you'll want to do it the reverse of what you want the front of your rug to be. So I am going to, it's really easy to do these templates this way by just laying my tufting frame down. Then I take this piece that I've printed. Remember I did it as absolutely as big as I could to fit in the frame. Okay. And I just try to get it as straight as I can. I kind of use this line and this line as a guide to kind of get it straight. This is just wide painter's tape, but you could use any tape. Scotch tape works too to tape it to the back. You just want it to connect to the, so that we can see it through the front so we can trace it. Okay, that down. okay let's see if we can see it. Okay. So see how you can kind of see that through? Even though I'm in studio and I don't have a ton of light, this cloth is really easy to see through. And then you just grab a Sharpie. <clears throat> use this purple one, but you can use any color Sharpie. It doesn't matter. And just trace the pattern through onto your tufting cloth. Now, if it's not perfect, that's okay. Because this is all going to be covered with yarn and you won't see it. I've learned if I kind of rest my hand on there, it helps me to get a smoother line. That's just something I figured out. Okay, so here's our rainbow forming. And this is that standard rainbow. But the rug we're making today, I want to tweak it a little bit, okay? So I want to add some more details. <clears throat> now, if you want to just plain standard rainbow like the one back there, that is this pattern. But I want to add a few extra things. I want more colors and more lines in mine. So I'm going to add just freehand using this line as a guide, a thinner line here. See, I'm not worried too much that I went off skew because I can fix it later with the yarn. And sometimes I'll just scribble the one I don't want just to keep myself knowing where my actual pattern line is, right? Okay, then I'm going to do even another thin one right here. This is gonna be another color. So see how you can easily alter these patterns to be whatever you want them to be. Okay, then we have this one. Then I'm gonna do a slightly bigger one right here. You'll see how this all comes together in just a minute. Kind of looks crazy at the moment. Okay. And then I'm going to do one right here. This is gonna really change up this rug. It's gonna be fun. A little one right here. Add another color there. Okay, and then I'm going to actually add a pattern, just a freehand pattern in this area that are kind of like angled little wedges. And I, I'm doing this kind of a boho feel rug. So it doesn't really matter if they're perfectly the same width or spacing. I'm just kind of angling all different ways. Kind of that boho sunrise feel on the edge here. Another thing you can do, and I'll show you an example of this at the end of class, is you can use punched shapes. So let's say you had like a circle punch. I could punch out the little circle. Here, let me show you actually. 
So this is just a shape that I punched out and I could place that on here and just trace around it too to get other shapes on. So if you wanna do stars or circles or butterflies or whatever, you can add little details to your patterns by using punched shapes. Okay, I'm also going to do that sunrise feel right here in this portion of the rug. Okay, so I'm not worried too much about it being perfect. Okay, and now we're ready to go. Now, another tip that I like to do is to keep myself track of myself so that I know what color goes where and I don't accidentally mess it up when I'm testing is I'll just mark. So I know I'm using light blue, navy blue, cream, yellow, pink, and gray on this rug. So every other one of these I want to be yellow. So I'm just going to mark them with a Y. Okay. All right, and the same here. We'll do yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, and then this one's going to be navy. So I'm going to write navy, light blue, pink. I found this just helps me. Gray, this one's light blue. Navy, pink, gray. Now really for color schemes, you can pick any color scheme that you love. I just went on and looked up boho rainbow for this one on a Google search. And I found some color schemes that I liked and then I just mimicked them in my rug design. But it, if you wanna do it to match your certain look of your house or your bathroom or whatever, that's how you can pick good color schemes. Just like you would pick any great color scheme for any crochet project or sewing project or paper project. It's the same idea with your rugs, just that same basic color theory and experimenting and trying things. Okay, we are ready to clamp our frame to our table. So the frame comes with these little C clamps, okay? And they're made to have a little spot right there that's just the right size for the PVC pipe. So I'm going underneath the bottom here where I have my fabric attached. I'm coming to this lower bar and bringing it under the edge of my table and then just twisting that to tighten it. And I like to do mine kind of like spaced, eh, like a third of the way in from each side, maybe a little less than that. And getting it attached to my table. And that's just so that once we apply the pressure of the tufting tool that we can you know, have the resistance of it and it won't go anywhere. Okay, actually, I just said I was gonna attach that and I need to show you something first. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it back off, but you can see how easy it is to get on and off with that. Okay, I'm gonna show you the gun first and use the table space to show you that before I attach it back on. Okay, so this is the tufting tool. Some people call them tufting guns. You notice I just slipped and called it that, but it's the easy tough tufting tool. And it has all these different parts, but it's super easy to use. So the cover is removable and I'll show you in a minute how to remove the cover. You've got this handle that will hold and this is the on off trigger right here, this little white button. This black button down at the bottom here turns and that is your speed adjustment. So you can make it go slower or faster until you get used to it and find where you like it. You can just turn that and it makes it go slower or faster. This is the on off. It is only on if you're holding this actively down, okay? As soon as you let go, it stops. This is where we will thread. So this is a thread guide. And then there's a little hole right here in the end of the tip that we will also thread up through. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. This face plate, when I say face plate, it's this little piece right here. And you'll see that the tip of the tool protrudes past it. When you're pushing it into your fabric, that face plate should be flat against the fabric all the way through. So it feels like a really big tip to be putting through this fabric, but it works. It's awesome. Okay, so that's basically the tool, right? Super easy. Right out of the box, you need to oil your tool. <clears throat> and then you'll need to oil it like every 
couple of rugs, okay? Because it gets dust from the yarn down in there. <clears throat> it's really easy. I've kind of prepped this one, but there's on the back side of the case, there's these five screws. Just find a little screwdriver. It's a Phillips head and just unscrew those screws, okay? And then lift off the back. And you can see those screws there. I just leave mine in, right? In my case, so I don't lose them. Um, there's a little nut that comes off the back as well. So keep track of those because you'll need it to put your case back together, okay? All right, this is what it looks like without its cover on. <clears throat> a couple things that I wanted to show you about it is um, you can kind of see how the gun works when I'm holding the button down versus not, okay? And I can turn this to show you the scissors right here. So I don't know the best way to get this, maybe on this other camera, Haley. Okay, so let me show you the scissors that come out. So this one's set to cut pile. So I'm turned off the power on it and I'm manually turning the scissors up. Can you see that tip of scissors that comes out? See how they, they come way up like this? And that cuts the fabric automatically for you. So you don't have to cut it each time. It's pretty cool. So the parts that you need to oil are the moving parts. So this, these little cream colored bars, you just take sewing machine oil. Okay, mine's in this little bottle. And you just put a tiny drop at the front and back of each of those little spots, okay? Flip it over, do it on this side, okay? And then just be careful, but turn the power on and just run it a little bit, okay? And that's gonna oil all those moving parts. I also like to turn the power off, move the scissors forward and oil the joint where the scissors meet. Okay, so it keeps those scissors nice and oiled up. Okay, and that's it. That's how easy it is. So you can take, I spilled a little oil on my desk because I'm gonna grab a baby wipe. Okay, and you just have to do that every couple of rugs. And then you can put the case back on and you're good to go. Okay, I'm just gonna set that aside because I'm gonna show you something else with that in a little bit. I'm gonna leave the case off mine for now. There's that tiny nut. So yeah, we gotta keep track of those. Okay. Now we're ready. Okay, we oiled our machine. We're ready to go. Let me just reattach my frame. How's everybody doing? Keeping up? I'm hoping so. I can't hear Felicia. If you're talking to me, Felicia, I can't hear you. I have Sorry. not oh. said anything. Okay, um, good. There are no questions at this moment. Excellent. So definitely. Okay. If anyone has any questions, please put them in the yes. chat. Okay. So now we're going to thread our tool. Okay. Some tips about yarn. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up my bin. So I have this bin that I like to put mine in. I like to put my yarn in something to hold it. And then I just set it on the floor while I'm working with it. You can also set it on the table. You're going to want your yarn to be in these cakes with a center pull. So you'll see my when yarn comes on a skein, it doesn't pull from the center like this, it pulls from the outside. So Michaels has an awesome tool, this little yarn winder, okay, that allows you to turn your regular skeins of yarn into that cake version of a, of a yarn skein, okay? Yarn cake. So I've done that with all of my yarn and it's all ready to go. These are the colors that I'm using. And I like to do two per color. And the reason is I like my rugs nice and thick. So I actually pull through two strands of yarn at a time. So this is regular standard weight yarn. You can use thinner yarns and you can use thicker yarns in your Easy Tuft, it works with both. If it's a thicker yarn, you may wanna only strand one piece through. That's just up to you. You'll start to play with it and see what you like. Your tool also comes with this yarn threader. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. It's basically just a big loop eye tool. And I'm going to put it right through the bottom of the hole in the tip and then up through the loop at the top. Okay, now I'm taking my two strands of yarn. It's kind of hard to show this on video, but guess what? On that We Are Memory Keepers website, there's a total video tutorial on how to thread it, okay? Now I'm just pulling it back through and you'll see that that threader has pulled both 
strands of my yarn through. I just set that threader back down and now my tool is ready to go. Okay. Hey Sherman, there is a yes. question asking how much does the tufting gun weigh? I'm not even sure. I would say maybe a couple pounds. It's not super heavy. It's a little lighter if you leave the case off, but I like the case on because it protects it from getting dust in the working parts of it. But I haven't ever weighed it, but it's not, not super heavy. Way lighter than a newborn baby. <laughs> so, um, not too bad. I don't know. I, I can find that out and get that information to you, Felicia. Sorry about that. Never actually weighed it. Okay, so now you'll see this handle swivel. So this is for me to have good control of the tip of my tufting tool. And since I started with pink, I'm going to do both pink sections. And what I like to do is outline my area first and then fill it in. So mostly with tufting, you're going to be working from bottom to top. When you're outlining, you can swivel, but see how this can stay stationary and then I can swivel my tool or I can swivel my handle this way. It really makes it easy to hold. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this bigger one so you can see. Now, again, when you press it in, it's like fully in so that this face plate is flush against the fabric. You hold it with a firm pressure. It's not like I'm really pushing, I'm not necessarily like uh, pushing, but I'm holding it against it with a pressure that is consistent, okay? So as you go, you just kind of let it, it walks on its own a little bit. Okay, and there's my first outline. So on the back, it's nice, on this back side that we're working from, it's nice and flat, but on the other side, it's fluffy, okay? Can't see that yet, but I'll show you in a minute. Okay, and then I got to the center point, and then I find it's hard to kind of go, because you're going upside down. So again, I'm going to come to over here to this bottom. Now, also be careful not to keep your yarn free. So you'll see I kind of have it over my hand and then in that box on the floor. So that way I don't tend to step on it. If you step on it, it'll unthread your tool, which is just annoying. I mean, you can rethread it, but sometimes I'll even pull if I'm feeling resistance on my yarn. I'll pull out a little bit of slack. Okay, now you can see here, I don't know if you can see, but I went outside of my line a little bit, okay? Because I was like, it's kind of tall and I missed it. If you want to, you can pull out these pieces. Since it's cut on the other side, they just pull right out, okay? And I just keep a garbage can next to me. So if you mess up, no big deal, just pull it out and do it again. However, be careful not to overwork your fabric because I don't know if you can see this now, but there's a little hole everywhere where my tip punched in. And you can only go over it maybe two, three times before you have a rip, okay? All right, that's a little better, okay? Now I'm going to outline the rest of it. I don't know if you can even hear me when the machine is running, hopefully you can. That one was a little easier for me to go all the way around, okay? So now I've got this outline. Now I'm just going to do strips. I find the outline helps me because then I can just kind of stick it anywhere in that line of yarn already and then stop again when I get to the line of yarn at the top. And you're just going to go in rows from bottom to top. And you'll notice I release my finger from the trigger before I pull it out. The reason I do that is if you pull it out while it's still cutting, it'll just shoot little pieces of yarn all over the place. So I do it to keep the mess down and to have a little bit better control. So when people are new to this and they first use it, I find that they're not actually pressing it into the cloth with enough firm of pressure. And if it starts bouncing on you, that's why. So you'll see little loops on the back. That's because your pressure isn't actually firm enough. Okay. It's not like I'm really using any muscle to do it. I'm just kind of making sure it's taut and flat against the cloth. Okay. And it's okay if there's a little space between it's, it's up to you as you start to feel like, if you feel like it's thick enough, let me show you how the back's looking. Okay. So see how we've got the fluff on this side. 
Okay, where all that has nice cut fluff. So that's the, actually the front, but it's kind of the back of where you're working, right? And we have a few questions. Uh, okay. So that thus far. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's one question asking what type of yarn are you using? This is the standard weight Michael's yarn. Um, the loops and threads impeccable yarn is what I'm actually using. All of this yarn is from Michael's from the impeccable thread loops and thread brand. And it's just a standard weight, regular yarn. I have also used the soft and silky one, the extra thin, like soft and silky one, and it works great. And I've also used the chunkier one that is a lot fatter. And that one, I just put one strand through and it worked great. So any of the yarns that Michael's that I've used have all worked beautifully. Now, maybe I may have missed it as well. When did you take the paper off? Oh, I took it off after I finished tracing. Gotcha. So once, once I was done tracing everything, I just pulled it off and set it aside. You can use them over and over again. Okay. <clears throat> and then I've accidentally one. tufted with the paper on the back and it makes it like a crunch, crunch sound. I mean, it works, but it just pokes holes in your pattern. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I didn't take my pattern off, took it off and it still was fine. So it's a very forgiving medium. Okay. Was there another okay, question? And I'll, ask, I'll ask you some more questions in a moment. Okay, so I could just keep going with this. This is where it's kind of like coloring, right? You know, when you color for Zen, just put on a podcast or a book or listen to some music. I'll frequently put my headphones on and just keep on going, right? And you can go over the top of where you've already tufted. Like if you aren't perfectly straight and there's a, on the other side, you can't even tell. But if you want to make sure it's really nice and thick, you can go over it again. So you can go over it two or three times. Again, two to three is kind of the, the threshold of what it can handle, the cloth can handle. And then if it's too thick and the machine can't go through it, it will just beep at you. It just goes beep. And then you know, oh, it's too thick. I can't put any more yarn down there. Okay, and you would just keep on going all the way across. And then to change yarn colors. Oh, another thing is see how sometimes on the cut pieces, there's these little ends that stick out or at the beginning or end of a line. That's where I usually get one of those because of this little piece that I have hanging out of the tip of my tool. You can just pull those out. doesn't even affect anything. You just grab them, pull them out, toss them in the trash. Okay. And it just keeps on going. Now to change color, I just simply pull this yarn out. You see how easy that comes out. So frequently I'm rethreading my tool. Um, let's do, let's do some yellow. Okay. So now I've just grabbed two strands of yellow. Sorry about that. Got a yeah, another go question. So on the yarn, so did it matter the type of yarn, whether nope. it was cotton acrylic or wool? Okay. Doesn't also, matter there's at question, all. There was another question asking as far as, um, being able to go up and down. So I guess mm -hmm. when, I think the question is asking, can you use the tool to go either direction when you're yes um, okay you can and i'll show you um changing the direction of it so i just re-threaded with yellow okay pulling some slack all right let's go sideways on one of these one of these yellow ones okay so what i like to do when I'm working a rug, it's just so I'm not re-threading all the time. Normally I would, if I had time, I'd tuft this whole pink and this whole pink, and then I'd switch to another color. So let's say it's yellow, okay? Oh. Whenever I thread my machine, I turn the power off just because I don't wanna accidentally bump the switch while I'm threading. So that's why it didn't go when I pushed it on. I just had to turn the power button back on. Okay, now I'm gonna turn sideways. See how I turn that? So I'm going up and down, turn sideways, okay? Up and down, and then let's go sideways. So here's sideways, okay? Then I'm gonna pull my threads. I like to pull those threads that are hanging out because it also lets me clearly see my line. Okay, now if, I, if you wanted to, you don't have to stand to tuft. You can sit to tuft if your table is lower. This is just a standing height table that I'm at today. But you can sit and tuft, that's what I usually do. But here's a sideways fill. Okay, or if you were left-handed and you wanted to go this way, you could, okay. You'd be holding it in the other hand, probably. 
my dominant hand is on my trigger. I'm right-handed. So it's just kind of experimenting and playing with it. All right. So see every so often I stop and pull those ends so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Just until I fill it in. Now you can see I'm starting to get some movement in my cloth. So if you need to just set your tufting tool down and give these a little half twist and get it tight again. Okay. Just have to do that occasionally, just because this is really bouncy when it's on there. I, I hope you can see it moving. Okay. Kind of bounces a little bit. And you can notice too, once you get the hang of it, you don't have to stop at the corner. Like um, you'll see me, I won't stop the trigger and I'll turn the corner. Okay. I stop, but I don't take it out, turn the corner, right? You'll get the hang of it really quickly. It just takes a few practice lines. So if you, when you first get your fabric on, if you wanna practice with it first, like I suggest starting like over in an area that's, cause we're gonna cut away this excess. You only need about an inch around your design. So you could just easily like stick it in here and try doing some lines just over off to the side or wherever. And it's not going to affect anything, right? To practice moving it and seeing how it feels in your hand. Okay. I want to make sure we get all the, I don't know how much to show you of tufting because I want to show you all the backing and everything too. So I think I might stop with the tufting and flip this over and show you another trick. Hey, Shannon, there's okay, a question. So, Before you stop tufting, mm -hmm. the question is, is yes. can you go downwards? I know you can turn the, you can turn the tool, but can, while you're tufting, can you just go straight up and down? Yeah. So here's an example. Let me see if I can get, where's a good spot, Haley, right here. Haley's helping me with video. Like right here, maybe if you can grab that. Okay. So here's straight up. Now you could turn it all the way around, right? Cause that has a complete swivel and come back down. See that? All right. I found, I just like doing it up because I get better control that way. And I'm not like wrangling the tool around this way or this way, but you can also go left to right. I don't know if that's easy to, easier to see in that way. Did that, did that help? Did that answer the question? I you can also so. do circles. So like, remember how I said you could trace a circle? Let's say, let's say I did a circle right here. Okay. Usually I didn't, I'm not following a line. So pardon my free handing. But usually when I do a circle here, Haley, right here, okay, is I'll start at the bottom of my circle and come up to the top. And then I'll start at the bottom again and come back up to the top. That helps me to get a better shape because once your tool is up here, my line of sight to that is blocked by the tool itself. So I come up to here and stop, come up to here and stop. In theory, you can do it however you feel comfortable doing it. Just play with it and see what you think. But yeah, it completely rotates almost all the way around until that thread guide hits the handle, okay? So it's got a lot of range of motion to it. You can move the handle to make it more comfortable or you can move the tool on a stationary handle. Does that make sense? Because this can just swing, right? <laughs> so the stability is coming from me holding it there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And then you can fill in your shape. <coughs> little frog in my throat. Sorry about that. Okay. But if you wanted to, <coughs> the direction you go doesn't really show in a cut pile rug on the other side. It all looks the same. It's just whatever is most comfortable to you with the tool moving in your hand and on the back it is all just that plush fluffy you can't really tell what direction the lines were going at all on the front of the rug okay let me move this down and get a sip of water because i got a little frog in my throat this is how the back is looking okay so you can see all this testing we did let me show you one tip real quick before we move on <clears throat> Sometimes when I want definition, more definition, I will trim between colors. So I could have just kept going and put the cream in here, right next to these golds or next to this, the next color right next to it. 
And that is how I did this one. I didn't stop and trim the rug in between colors. I just went for it, right? And so it's all kind of like one level and flat and it fits together. When I'm doing smaller details, often I like to use the Easy Tuft trimmers. These are the shears and they're battery. Um, they're just, you charge the battery with a USB and then you can just turn it on like that. And then there's different heads and you can adjust them basically hair tr trimmers, basically, right? Okay, and I like to trim the edges to add more definition between things. So you just use them, put them flat against the fabric. Okay, let me show you in this one. So see how I can run them flat against and it doesn't cut my flat fabric and then just angle them up a little bit. Okay, try to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what's happening here. Okay, this is where you get yarn everywhere. So if you're sensitive to it, frequently when I'm using the trimmers, I will wear a mask because I don't wanna breathe my entire skein of yarn, which it's felt like before when I've done a lot of trimming. Okay, you can kind of angle them to kind of get a line like this. Okay, let me trim this all the way and I'll show you it, how it looks compared to this one that I didn't trim. Okay, there's different attachments for different depths that you can also attach just like a hair clipper. Okay. Another thing I like to keep handy is a dust buster. So I can get this all off of here so I can show you. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the difference. So here's the one I trimmed with the shears and here's the one that I didn't trim. Okay. So that's how you can get a little bit more definition on the edges is if you want like a straight, a line or even a little groove between your colors, I suggest trimming it before you put the next color on. If you want them to blend more, then don't trim them between colors, okay? Then they'll just kind of blend into each other and become fluffy goodness, okay? All right, I'm gonna switch out, yes? I know that you're running and we got about 15 minutes. We have several questions okay. really, really quick. Um, so as far as uh, one question is asking if you can make it longer. So I'm wondering if the... Um, the stand that is oh, on the tufting gun. The I tufting the gun stand, has a standard. I'm just oh, this, I, this stand. Mm -hmm. I this think one the is stand is one of it opens up more for you to make it longer. Make it bigger. Yeah, I don't. At this time, no. With this frame, it's just this size, the twenty by thirty size. Um, if you do want to make your own frame, it's fairly easy with. Um, just wood from like your, your Home Depot or whatever. You can look up a tutorial on how to make your own larger frame. I've made one that was bigger for myself personally, just out of one by twos and carpet tack. So there is a way to do that. Um, just be careful of the carpet tack because I always scratch myself on it, which is one thing that's nice about this one is it doesn't have anything pokey grabbing it, you know, but you can make bigger frames. I would suggest if you want something bigger um, that you look online for a tutorial. They're all over the place. Just look up tufting frame, DIY tufting frame. This one is a standard 20 by 30. So it does like a bath mat size. This is about bath mat size. You can do multiple things on one. So like if you were doing a set of coasters, you could do trace a whole bunch of rugs, you know, little rugs on there and do all of the individual rugs and then take them apart. Um, that's one fun thing. So yeah, at this time, this is the only size frame that we are has made so far. So I don't know if there's plans in the future. I guess it depends on how the program does and if they'll, you know, do extension kits or something maybe in the future. I don't know. That's a great suggestion though. I'll pass that along to the team. So you can see here, this is after I've tufted everything and you can notice that if, if we can get a close up, maybe right in here, Haley, you can see that trimming that I just showed you. So you can kind of see how it makes a little divot you turn it. Okay. So I have really clear definition between my lines. So I did that on this entire rug versus this one where I didn't. So you can kind of see how the yellow and the blue kind of blend together or the pinks kind of blend together more. So that is not trimming till the very end. This is trimming between colors as I went. Okay. And you can see that you can actually take the trimmers and kind of push them into it here and get a really like kind of dip. You can make texture different with them, right? 
and you can smooth out anything you want to. Like this is probably what I would do regardless. Even on that one, I took my trimmers across and just kind of smoothed it out. Cause every so often you'll get a rogue thread that just wants to go longer, or pops through further or something like that. And you just trim them all up. So it's nice and smooth. You can also pull out any loose threads. I like to keep tweezers on hand and like this one's kind of poking up. So if you just want to get rid of that guy, you can just pull it out. Okay. Just grab your tweezers. Or if you randomly like get a blue thread in your pink and you need to pull it out, you just grab it and pull it out. Okay. So because we haven't glued the back yet, you can still pull the threads. Okay. So now let's get ready to glue the back. So you saw how easy I could pull that out, right? So we can't, um, oops, are these the same clippers I was using? Um, I just want to secure this to the table again. So I'm going to press against it with my adhesive. Okay. Sorry, didn't realize they were up so high. I just popped them off. So they're adjustable too, so that they can fit most tables. All right, so we're tested completely. We've finished pulling our loose strands. I like to trim it before I glue it because sometimes when I'm trimming, I'll find those loose strands. And when it's glued, you can still cut them out, but it's just easier to be able to pull them out with tweezers, in my opinion. Okay, so our adhesive, which I think I knocked down earlier. Okay, so this is the Easy Tuft tufting adhesive. Just comes in a little bottle like this. What's nice about this one is it is white and it dries almost clear. It's really, really pretty. So some people will use like tufting or carpet adhesive from Home Depot, but it dries yellow or brown. And I just think when you're doing lighter colors, this white adhesive is so much nicer in my opinion. So you can leave your frame standing up like this. You can take it out of the frame if you'd rather to do adhesive, but this is just a, we are, uh, this is an easy tough palette knife. Any palette knife really would work. I like this one because it's plastic and it's just really smooth. So I'm just going to squirt the adhesive right on the palette knife. This is how I like to do it. And just work it into the fibers on the back of my rug. Okay. And you would just continue in this way. It's really sticky. That's why I put gloves on, but I've also done it without and then just, <laughs> but it's probably smart to wear gloves just for the sticky factor, okay? And you can go a little bit off the edge if you need to. I try to not go too far off because I find it's easier to finish my rug later if I haven't. So see how it's just kind of absorbing it in and just smoothing it down. You can go up, down, sideways, whatever, right? So you would just continue in that way until the whole thing is covered in adhesive. I'm gonna skip ahead. And then you will let it dry for about eight hours till you can touch it and it's not sticky anymore, okay? All right, I'm gonna move this off now. And then you just take it out of your frame the same way that we put it in. Just pop these off, pull those pegs out. And then you have your finished rug. I like to do the adhesive of mine while it's in the frame because I feel like it holds its shape the best that way. But I've also done them out of the frame and it still works. So if you want to use your frame for the next project and you don't want to wait for the adhesive to dry, you can pull it out and then lay it flat and put the adhesive on it. So this one is dry. So you can see that it's really flexible, right? And it's clear. So this nice cream color stays creamy. Okay, to finish your rug real quick, because I want to show you some things. We only have a few minutes left. To finish your rug, you'll cut away this excess, leaving about an inch. And again, this doesn't really have to be perfect. Okay. I save this because sometimes you can use it for smaller punch needle projects, or you could use it to mend. If you like accidentally got a hole in your fabric, you can do a little mending. Maybe in a future class I can show troubleshooting, like what happens if you get a hole in your fabric? How do you fix that? Because <laughs> there are ways to do it and you can Google it because there are tufters out there that are awesome and they have some good tips that maybe we could do another class in the future and I can show more of that. Okay, so you can see I kind of just rough cut around the edge. And then just like when you do any type of sewing project, 
where you're going to, we're going to fold this to the back, right? So on this curve, I'm going to want to cut the corners and just snip, <clears throat> snip a few relief cuts in so that it will bend without, right? Okay, so I would just go all the way around. So now I have these little flaps so that they can overlap each other on the curve, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And then you just use a hot glue gun, okay? So here's my hot glue gun. You can either run the line on the rug or just run a line on the, my hot glue gun's hot. There we go, okay? Run it, sometimes I just run it on the edge. Okay, and this is very porous fabric, so be careful with your fingers. And then just fold it over to get this nice clean edge of a fold. So this backer is gonna go all the way over. Okay, so I'm starting to get a clean edge on my rug. Okay, and then on the sides, you would just do the same on these little panels. Okay. I kind of just do them a couple at a time, probably. Kind of so you can get the idea here. Okay, so see how I'm folding those over and they're kind of overlapping each other a little bit. And then I would just keep going right to the edge of the rug so I get this nice rug shape, okay? Then once that's all folded over, let's pretend because we're running out of time. Okay, so I would have done the cut relief and used the hot glue on that whole thing. Then you would use this backing cloth. So this is the Easy Tuft backing cloth. It's also cut the same size as the frame, so a large rug can fit. And I would just lay this down on top and take my scissors and cut a matching shape, right, out of the backing cloth. Then you just use a little spray adhesive, any spray adhesive spray the back of your rug or spray the back of your piece and press it on, okay? I wish I would have done a step out of this so that you could see, but so you have that nice finish. So let me show you on the back of this one. <clears throat> okay, so you can see how I cut the backing cloth and it's stuck down with that spray adhesive. And then there's the Easy Tough Twill Tape, which is optional, but I like using it because I like the finished edge. So this is just a twill tape and you just hot glue it again and just move it around. It's nice and flexible. So it moves around the corners really nice because you can stretch it and you just hot glue that in place. And that's the last step to finish your rug. Okay, we have five minutes. Okay, then you can do another trim, a quick vacuum, get any loose threads out. And this is kind of what our rug would look like from the front, the one that we made. And again, like if you see a little, after you've glued, if you see a little stray thread, you can just use scissors to trim. You could actually shape a rug completely with scissors if you wanted to. I just think the trimmers make it faster. Okay, so there's our finished rug. Let me show you some other variations of the rainbow rug that I did. Okay, this one is a Christmas version of the rainbow rug. So this one, I did trace those circles and fill them in and added more lines and just random shapes and did some fun, happy Christmas colors with that one. So same pattern, right? This one's the same, this one's the same, this one's the same. You see how different they look? I also use the rainbow pattern to make this rug. Okay, so this one, I just, in that outer pattern piece, so you see how it's still the pattern, I did little lines of gold all the way across and then just made lots smaller lines in between to get all the colors. And then I made a rectangle around the whole thing to make it into an actual like two by three bath mat, okay? Or door mat. Then I also had the little baby purse that I'm working on, okay? That's the same rainbow shape, just shrunk down. And I did two of them and one long strip to make the bottom. Still need to add a handle to this and some clasp or something. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it. So that one's a work in progress. All right. So there's so many options. Now, one thing I hadn't shown you yet, we have only a couple minutes, is the Easy Tuft gun can do that cut pile, but it can also do loop pile. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is a type of pile that it's not cut, but it's more like that Berber carpet that has the little loops. 
okay? And it can also do that. Let me show you really quick how you change your gun to do that, okay? So this one, again, you would take the case off and the tool comes with this little Allen wrench and you're wanting to look right on the tip here, make sure your power's off, okay? Right on the tip here, there's this little screw right here, okay? And you just put your Allen wrench in there. And basically what we're going to do, go left, left loose, is disable the scissors, okay? So you just loosen that a little bit. And then there's this little metal block right here. Let me set it down so that Haley can get a good picture. I put my hand in, okay? I don't know if you saw it, this little metal block just fell out from underneath that screw, okay? So it goes in with the longer, so you see how it's angled? Just pay attention when you take it out the first time and then you'll remember, but it goes back in that same way with the long angled piece toward the back on the side, okay? And that basically has disabled the scissors, okay? So just set this aside. Let me show you quickly loop. Hopefully we're not going to run over, but maybe a minute. Sorry, Felicia. <laughs> okay. Show you the loop real quick. You thread it exactly the same way. I would have put my case back on, but I'm not going to for the purpose of time. Okay. And now those little scissors are disabled. Might have to do a loop pile class too. It's just so much to cover. Okay, and now you put it in the same way, keep your scissors handy because there's, you have to cut it. So since, since there's no, okay, so it works the same way, but since there's no scissor, see how it will pull out if I keep pulling? So you have to cut it yourself at the top of each line. So I usually just hold on to my scissors with my other hand, stop at the end of the line, snip. Okay, and keep going like that. That will do the little loops. So let me see if I can show you that part. Okay, so there's the loop. And those you don't have to trim or anything. You can still pull loose threads, but I found you don't really need to get as many lo loose threads this way because it's not really cutting anything. So that's the cut pile versus the loop pile. And what's cool about the Easy Tuft gun is you can switch between the two so easy. You just slip that block back in, it reactivates the scissors, and you're good to go. I think that's everything. Got kind of quick there at the end. <laughs> yes, and just so you know, there are requests for yes, definitely do um, additional <laughs> classes, especially the loop class. Um, there are a lot of questions that I did not get to ask you. Um, so okay. what is the way that they can reach out to you so they can ask those questions directly? Um, they can, let's see, what would be the best way they could email me that would work. So it's Shannon, but I only have one N in the middle of my name. So it's S H A N O N K at americancrafts.com. And I'd be happy to field those questions. Wonderful. So I, I, I promise, like, like I said at the beginning, is that I'm pretty sure there will love, people will love to see more classes, more tutorials. Um, there's a lot of interest. So I thank you very much. There's a lot of people saying thank you for the demo. Very informative. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Like said, Make sure to go to that website questions. too. The We Are Memory Keepers website is a good resource because we have done some video tutorials there as well. Oh, really quick. I'm glad you said that. Um, there is a question that was asking on the tutorial on the site. There is a picture of a butterfly, but they could not yes. find they could not find the actual template for the butterfly. OK, I will send that to our marketing specialist and see if they can add that there. Wonderful. Once again, I want to thank everyone for coming and we will look forward to having more classes. So thank you, guys. And whatever else you may have to share, Shannon, you can do it now. Okay. That's it. That's all. Just give it a try. It's really fun. Thank <laughs> You'll you. Like it. Thank Bye, you, everybody. Everyone. Bye.